The Tetons have got to be one of the most dramatic scarp edges in the world, with the mountains rising more than a vertical mile above the plains. And with the odd forest fire, that can lead to some exquisite sunsets. However, I had other goals on Signal Mountain that night. You see, the Earth rotates about, well, once per day. And what with the tilt of the Earth's axis being what it is, that means that in autumn, in the Tetons, you get about eight hours of astronomical dark. Jupiter, on the other hand, rotates comparatively quickly, about once every eight hours. And that means that it's, on paper, possible to watch an entire rotation of the planet over the course of a single night. However, Jupiter and the Earth have to be in their right places in their orbits to do this. That is, that Jupiter basically has to rise at sunset, be at its highest in the sky at about midnight, and then set at about sunrise. And that only happens for a couple of months each year. Now, Jupiter is almost always brighter than the brightest stars. It's not hard to find. That's it there. And I need to keep my telescope pointing in the same direction, at Jupiter. And so the telescope is driven to compensate for the Earth's rotation. And now comes the point where you have to let it all go. Doubt, uncertainty, free your mind. The stars and the telescope are effectively the only static items in this picture. The stars here are not really moving, and the telescope is not really following them. The stars and the telescope are a static frame of reference, and it's the Earth and everything on its surface that is merely spinning in the foreground. Free your mind and feel its motion, for it's what's beneath your feet as we speak. Now, Jupiter is bright, but quite angularly small. I mean, just to put it all into perspective, the Jovian system, that's Jupiter and its moons, are about the same angular size as the full moon. And if you've ever looked at the shimmer on the road on a hot day, imagine what that would look like if you were looking at something about as small as a large crater on the moon. Yeah, that atmospheric shimmer is a real killer for planetary observing. Fortunately, the next day the conditions were much better. There are also some techie tricks that you can do with image processing of video that allow you to transform this wavy video into this static image. After that, all you need to do is take about 10 seconds of video every three minutes for eight hours or so, and then do all the menial clicky work on the processing of the video, and this is what you get. Actually, the planet's not toppling there, that's just the fact that the telescope isn't compensating for field rotation, but I can get rid of that in editing. There you go. And yet there is no reason whatsoever why this couldn't be automated. I just did this as a sort of one-off proof of concept thing, and as such it wasn't worth writing the automation for. But in many ways, it's not even Jupiter that's the star here. It's the march of technology. In about the year that I was born, Pioneer 10 became the first probe to visit Jupiter. At the time, the most distant man-made object. The apex of mankind's ability at that time. The best of rocket technology, spacecraft design, remote imaging. And in about half an hour, it recorded an image like this. And now, some 40 years later, a lone guy with a couple of thousand bucks worth of telescope, portable enough to be moved around in a small car, a couple of hundred bucks worth of HD camera, and some computer wizardry that could run on any computer watching this video, and a single man can produce this from about 10 seconds of video, and this from a night of observing. Indeed, the beauty goes beyond the technological advances of mankind, for now you can feel in real time the pulse of the solar system. Watching the cloud tops of Jupiter hurtle around, watching Io, the most volcanic body in the solar system, and its shadow silently trek across the planetary disk, and you know that all of this is happening in merely hours. And then you look at the stars spinning, and in a flash you free your mind, and you let it all go, and you conceive the reality that the ground under your feet is what's in motion under the static stars, and you feel the rolling spin of the earth within the monstrous void, and there, in the mind's eye, you turn to that bright star, and you perceive in real time the rotation of the Jovian system from the terrestrial merry-go-round. A world, nay, a solar system in motion, for those with the vision to tilt their heads upwards towards the infinite horizon. 